Today is my ground zero moment of truly seeing the power of Copilot or ChatGPT and language learning models. Um, you know, this is, I, I've been in the construction industry and the steel detailing industry and working with Tecla structures since January of 2005. And I've been working with the Tecla API, which is the programming interface using C Sharp and .NET since its conception in about uh, 2007 to 2008. And, um, you know, so I've written lots and lots and lots and lots of code. And the there is documentation uh, for the Tecla API and all of the objects and class structures and everything like that online. And I just wanted to test and see what a uh, detailed in a steel detailer or construction person's terminology and try to get a co-pilot to generate C-sharp code for me based on just a narrative of something that I'm looking for uh, to, to be done in Tecla structures, but to have code automatically written for me um, in C Sharp uh, just by, by kind of typing in briefly what I want. Now, I noticed that the more uh, detailed that I got, the uh, better the code was. But what blew, what blew me away was not just, hey, it generated some code, is that it continued to improve the code as I talked with it. And I'm about to show you that. And this, this blew my mind. I now have an interface here where it's as if I'm talking to a junior programmer and I'm training them and I didn't have to understand. Like, I mean, I have to know programming, but I didn't have to understand how to feed in certain text or, or certain inputs into this to get to it, get it to improve it. I talked to it like as if I was talking to a human being and it churned out the code adjustments correctly to exactly what I was looking for. And this just blew my mind. Okay, the original prompt, all right? So right here, provide C-sharp code using the Tecla Structures API that inserts two columns at 0, 0, uh, 0 and then 1,000, comma, 0, 0. So I was getting pretty granular here because I felt like mm, I, I probably need to provide better detail so it understands what I'm trying to tell it to do. But I just said with the top of the column at 2,000 millimeters, so I told it the height, and that there should be a beam spanning between the top of the two columns. I mean, this is pretty generic text. And then look at this. It generated the code. It created and declared the point uh, variables. It instantiated the two column classes. Just put in some default uh, text here that it probably pulled from the API documentation, which just has these standard European profiles. That's what's going on there. Okay, so that that's pretty common. You would see that everywhere. So I see exactly where that, as an expert, see exactly where it pulled that from, and then it's calling the insertion here of those two column objects. Then it instantiates a beam object, and what's amazing is that it knew in the Techly API that there's no such thing as a column object. The class that you actually use for a column is a beam. I'm I'm blown away that it understands the context of that. Then. Then here it says, okay, let's instantiate a new beam with the start and the end point at the end point of the columns. Like it knew that the top of columns in Tecla structures are the end points or the second points. That's, that's insane. Like I know that as a detailer, but the sheer fact that it generated the code from my prompt, like and understood the context of what I was trying to say is, is crazy. It also has all this other supporting code correct. Like you have to instantiate your connection to the Tecla model. Check if the Tecla model is uh, is open and that it can actually connect to it. This is you know being pulled from all the example code that's probably written with all the class documentation. So, but it's still amazing that it understands that it needs to do this based off of looking at lots of code examples that it needs to do that before it does the actual logic of the code that I prompted it to do. That's amazing. Even here at the bottom the step where these classes that have been inserted need to actually be uh, committed to the Tecla structures model. So it knew all of the complete code and wrapped it up into a nice little uh, function or method here uh, to execute this code. P pretty amazing. Okay. So then I was like, all right, well, can you create some C-sharp code using the Tecla API that inserts a clip angle connection 141 between a beam and the column? And that's very Tecla speak. That's exactly what I would say in Tecla, right? Like if I were talking to somebody. And, you know, it, it, it got lost here. It didn't really know what to do. Okay. And so, you know, I didn't get too surprised. I was like, all right, well, it, it did instantiate a couple objects and I didn't even give it any parameters. It looks like it kind of, you know, took some stuff from, from, you know, the previous code or just kind of came up with a guess on making a beam in a column. Right. 
Again, use some default uh, just profile material grade inputs from the documentation examples that sees online. Okay. And then here, this is incorrect. And so this is why I'm making this video is that uh, you can see here that it, it tried to take my logic and instantiate this clip angle connection object, like as if that was there, but there is no such thing as this object type in the Tecla API. So this is a little bit of hallucinating here. Like it's, it's, it's reading code, but doesn't quite exactly understand what needs to be done here. I was even surprised that it put a position rotation like at zero here, because there is something in the code about like putting in connections and stuff like that, that you kind of need to set up the up vector and, and certain things. So I was, I was like a little bit like, oh wow, I'm a little bit surprised by um, you know, what it was doing here. Now, check it out. I was like, hey, uh, great, you know, uh, adjust the code above to use the connection class object for the clip angle. So it's like, I'm teaching this thing just using normal English. I was like, hey, don't you, there is no such thing as a clip angle object. I'll replace that with a connection class object. It intelligently then started to actually read the documentation on the Tecla API for that connection class instantiated that and then it started to see hmm i'm probably supposed to do some different things here uh, based on what he was originally telling me now that i see this connection class and i see some of the properties and fields of different things that i can set on it based on his context and i didn't need to retype the full the full like you know question and conversation here it's continuing to learn from the original prompts and what i've been doing that that's amazing okay then then i was like hey you're getting closer to getting the code correct. The connection class object declared as clip angle connection should have uh, the column set at the primary as the primary. And see, look, I even typoed that. So I probably, if I had said that correctly, it'd have been better. And the beam is the secondary part because it didn't get that actually here in this code. And maybe that typo may have impacted that. The connection number property should be 141 and the connection name property should be clip angle. Now, again, I'm a coder, so I know C sharp. I know the language of what to call this as a class object and what what properties are. So I'm kind of know what to tell uh, you know Copilot here what it needs to be changing in my lingo, right? Mm -hmm. So then, uh, and I love the responses like these human being type responses. Certainly, my apologizes uh, apologies for the oversight. Now, okay, now I'm gonna dig deeper in here. I'm looking at this. Hey, it it figured out exactly what I was talking about. Name, clip angle, and then connection number 141, and the data type is correct. You know, it's an integer. It, it understands the properties uh, and the documentation of the class object and what I'm telling it to do. Now, it's still screwing up here the load attributes, okay? Uh, the load attributes property is really for passing a string of data to it um, based on the saved attribute settings in Tecla structures. Now it's, uh, and again, I'm a little bit surprised by this because it should recognize that this uh, property doesn't have the ability to pass two, uh, you know, values to it um, or parameters to that method, uh, or maybe it does and there's an overload or something there, but it's also passing objects when I think string can only be passed in there. So I was a little bit surprised by this, but again, I'm the experienced coder, so I kind of know what's going on and I can kind of see what it's trying to do. Like I, I can understand the logic of how it tried to get here because it it just, it, it doesn't understand this, but it's trying to sort of like pass the column and the beam as inputs to that connection. So I'm, I'm, I'm pretty surprised by what it's doing. So check it out. I'm like, all right, look, man, you're almost there. So here's this, this text right here. You're almost there and are doing really well. Like I'm, I'm talking to this thing, like in just human language, the load attributes method in your code should pass the string standard as the value and the beam and column object should not be passed to that method. Okay. Listen, Look, I, I didn't tell it what the beam and the column should be, uh, you know, passed to. Like I, I told that actually in the, the the prompt above, but look at this. It fixed that, you know, put standard in the load attributes. It left the name and the connection number. And this time it pulled from my original previous prompts up above, above this one. And it passed the column and the beam to the correct methods here. And now... This code is technically correct after a couple of quick prompts and adjustments to Copilot in human language, right? And just talking language exactly like as if I was talking to a junior programmer or training a programmer. This is game changing.